Hello and welcome back to Multivariable Calculus. And in today's part 16, we will talk about Taylor's theorem for multivariable functions. So you see, this will be a direct generalization of Taylor's theorem from real analysis. However, you already know, before we start, I really want to thank all the nice people who support this channel on Steady, via PayPal or by other means. And please don't forget to download the PDF version and the quiz for this video with the link in the description. Okay, then let's start the video by recalling the one-dimensional case of Taylor's theorem. There you should know that we can use polynomials for local approximations. More precisely, we need a function that is a few times differentiable. And then we fix a point on the x-axis we now call x tilde and this is usually called the expansion point. And now exactly around this point we want to have local approximations. And we already know that the tangent given by the derivative gives us a linear approximation. And then we can go to higher order polynomials like a parabola to get a quadratic approximation. And depending how many times the function is differentiable, we can choose an appropriate polynomial for the approximation. And in some sense the approximation should get better the higher the order of the polynomial. Now, in fact, it's not complicated at all to translate this into multivariable calculus. It should be more or less the same thing, just with the difference that this one-dimensional x-axis here is now an n-dimensional domain. So now what we consider is a function f with domain rn and values in r. Indeed, for such a function we already know how the linear approximation works when we have differentiability. So you might recall, this is exactly how we started the generalization for derivatives. Therefore, what we have to do here is to simply add a vector h to our expansion point x tilde. And then the linear approximation means that the value at this point, f of x tilde plus h, is roughly given by the tangent. And in multivariable calculus, this means we have f of x tilde plus a linear map. And there we have learned that for this one we can use the Jacobian matrix Jf. And moreover, we have the matrix vector multiplication with h. Okay, then how good this approximation is, is usually measured with an error term phi. So we have phi of h with the property that it goes fast to zero when h goes to zero. More precisely, phi of h divided by the norm of h goes to zero when h goes to zero. So please don't forget, this is essential such that this term here is the linear approximation for the function f at the expansion point x tilde. Okay, then at this point you can ask what does the quadratic approximation look like in this multivariable setting. And in fact, it's not so different from the one dimensional case from before. We just need to know how we can express a polynomial with several variables. And then you might already know we need the appropriate one that consists of second order partial derivatives of f. And at this point I can already tell you, in the end this will be the so called Hessian matrix. Moreover, usually this is denoted with a capital H. Now, how this one is exactly defined we will discuss in another video. Here I first want to concentrate on how the quadratic approximation works. Hence, this means this term now should be the quadratic term, which means the vector h should come in two times. So you know, roughly said, we need it squared. However, of course we can't square a vector, therefore we multiply it here from the right and from the left hand side. Moreover, if we want to do it from the left hand side, we need the transpose of this vector. Okay, there we have it, this is how the whole quadratic approximation should look like. And then of course we also need an error term and maybe we call it psi now. And as before, this should go fast enough to zero when h tends to zero. And in order to have a good quadratic approximation, it should go faster to zero than h squared. Therefore, we have to divide this term here by the norm of h squared. Okay, with this I would say now we have the whole idea how we can generalize Taylor's theorem in multivariable calculus such that we now can write down the theorem. So this will be the generalized version of Taylor's theorem where we can use our multi-index notation from the last video. However, first let's fix the assumptions we need here. So as before, we have a function f with n variables. 
Now, the chosen domain here could be a general open set. However, our formulation is a little bit simpler if we choose the whole Rn for it. Okay, but now what we need is that a lot of partial derivatives exist. Indeed, we want that all partial derivatives of the kth plus 1th order exist. And moreover, they should also form continuous functions defined on Rn. There, you might already know, there is a short formulation for this. We would say that f is ck plus 1. So f is an element in the set ck plus 1 of Rn. So you should know this notation from the one-dimensional case for real analysis, but you see, we can also use it here in this multi-dimensional case in this sense. Okay, by having this, we are ready to write down the formulation for Taylor's theorem. Now, with respect to what we have said before, we can summarize the result by saying we have an approximation with a polynomial of kth order. Therefore, we also consider f of x tilde plus h. And of course, here x tilde and h are elements of Rn. In addition, we still call x tilde our expansion point. Okay, then the result here is that we have an approximation with a polynomial tk. And there you know, this is what we call the Taylor polynomial. More precisely, it should be the kth order Taylor polynomial. In addition to that, we also need an error term, which measures how good the approximation is. And this is what we call here the remainder term Rk. So you see, it's completely similar to Taylor's theorem in the one-dimensional case. However, of course, still missing here is what are the formulas to calculate both terms here. And now the good thing is, they also look completely analogous to the things we already know. More precisely, the Taylor polynomial can be written as a sum over all derivatives up to the kth order. And there you might already guess, we can summarize them with the multi-index notation. So here we have the differential operator d alpha, where alpha is a multi-index. In other words, here we need the partial derivatives of f at the expansion point x tilde. And then we simply divide the whole thing by the factorial of alpha. Here please recall that alpha factorial is defined with the components of alpha. Okay, then in order to get a polynomial, we multiply this coefficient with h to the power alpha. There, you also already know, a vector to the power of a multi-index is just a product of the components of h. So we see this is a well-defined polynomial where in the coefficients we find the partial derivatives of f. And now we simply have to add that we sum over all multi-indices alpha where the absolute value of alpha is less or equal than k. This means the highest order here is indeed just k. Okay, there we have it. You see this is the definition of the Taylor polynomial of the kth order. Hence you see the only thing missing now would be a nice formula for the remainder term. In fact, there is a very nice one, which almost looks the same as the formula for the Taylor polynomial. The only difference here is that we now only look at the multi-indices with the highest order, so k plus 1. Moreover, we also don't evaluate the partial derivatives here at the expansion point x tilde, but at an intermediate point. And as often, we use for this point the Greek letter xi. Now, I said it's an intermediate point, which means it should lie between x tilde and x tilde plus h. And now in this higher dimensional case, it simply means that c lies on the line between x tilde and x tilde plus h. This is not hard to visualize because both things are just points in Rn, and of course we can connect them with a line. Indeed, this line should be given by the vector h. And now we can conclude here that xi is just one vector on this line. And exactly this property makes it an intermediate point. And please note, this is in fact the exact generalization from the one-dimensional case. Or to say it in other words, if we set n is equal to 1, we get Taylor's theorem as we have discussed it in real analysis. If you don't remember this one-dimensional formulation, now is the best time to re-watch these videos. Because then I think it's not hard at all to understand this multivariable formulation here. Moreover, I would also say that some examples for these new formulas should also help to understand it. Therefore, we will discuss some good examples in the next video. 
So I hope that I meet you there and have a nice day. Bye.